Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer, and we are returning to our Fridays for Future Let's Play of Fate of the World, the climate change game. So, it is 2030, we are just um, finished with this round, so let's see what this round brings. We have been surprised pretty badly by some flash flooding, so let's see what's going on. So, firstly, the global gas production peaks, so now global gas production is falling. Now, that might seem like a good thing, of course, for climate change, because gas, burning gas uh, is obviously bad for the environment, but... It's much better to burn gas than it is to use coal, so that is a problem. We have seen a temperature increase in the last couple of turns. Remember, we are losing the game if the temperature goes above 3 degrees Celsius until 2200. So right now the projection is at 6 degrees, so that's really, really bad. Global oil production is on the rise though, so that is good because it will not kill off our economy then. Global population is going alright. Ooh, things in North America are not quite as good as we would have hoped. So we expected a massive decrease in annual emissions, uh, which was not the case. Everything else, though, was somewhat as expected, we can say. So yeah, let's see what's going on. Otherwise, people do start to like us a little bit more in Japan, which is good, because they were on the verge of kicking us out. People in India really, really hate us, so we'll have to check out what's going on there. And support in North America is coming to critical levels, so three hearts or less, that's that's pretty bad. Uh, Europe doesn't like us either, so that is someone to expect it, to be expected. So yeah, let's see what's going on. Uh, let's start out actually with China, because I do think by now the emissions, the global emissions in North America are about half of what they are in China, so I think starting in 2035 we will be starting our turns in China and only then go through North America, Europe, Latin America, that sort of thing. Also notice that the Middle East has very much overtaken Europe and India has already overtaken Europe, uh, which is a great cause of concern. So let's see what's going on in China in terms of news. So there is water stress, fresh water supplies are being severely overexploited, resulting in damage to the agricultural sector. Less performance for agriculture, less healthcare spending, a lot of people dying, migration risk, that is all not very good. We're also seeing some slow advances in technology. Uh, China does like us a little bit more because we have been building up some seawalls and such, so that's nice to see. Some topsoil trouble, not really that much we can do about that, I believe, for right now. Peace reigns, that's nice to see. And actually, there were our storm damage controls are coming in nicely uh, because we're only losing a little bit of housing and a little bit of capital index on all the economy things, so that could have been much worse if we hadn't uh, been using up the or building up seawalls so yeah that's nice to see so other than that really only water being a problem uh, down here so and of course the emissions so let's briefly check on whether the emissions are actually falling or increasing so very much the industrial emissions are increasing dramatically whereas the energy is sort of kept in balance but overall that's that's a decent development we are trying to turn over China to nuclear power and we're going to try to reduce the coal usage in power, so that is good. Because we should check on, on the electricity here and see what it's being generated off. And indeed we can see that coal, this orange line here, is dropping very significantly, nearly a third or so. Uh, While well, basically uranium is taking its place. So for now that's good because it's, it's carbon uh, neutral, so that is good. We could acquire smart grids, but it's two turns away anyway, so we don't actually need to do that. So what I'm really concerned then about is, you know, things in, in the sorry in the energy sector do seem to be going on all right. However, I think the industrial items are not quite as good. So yeah, the coal use here in the ind industry is is increasing every turn. So yes, I do think it is now time to actually play the coal-free industry card. So that is trying to shift to electrical machinery in the industry. So basically that's mostly building, actually. I think uh, cement and, and such do require a lot of burning of coal and, and, and items like that. So that, I think, is a no-brainer that we should do. We could also go for vegetarian revolution because that means agriculture will be using less and less water per turn, and that is certainly a very good development. On the other hand, it would use more gas and it would reduce the economy. So something that we could do instead is switch to organic farming. 
and that would ha have a similar effect of using much less water, a little bit energy usage and, and such. So personally actually not a fan of this, but let's do this. We could also think about the water management program, but I think for now this is fine. I'm also going to buy one more cart in China. And what we're going to do is we are going to reintroduce the cab and trade uh, scheme. So there, let's talk about this a second here. So in, in the real life, um, this is a very good mechanism. So in real life, that sets an emission target for every region, every company, every person, um, whatever you want. Um, and then you can trade uh, with your rights to emit carbon. And that would obviously be a very good incentive because that actually allows you to limit uh, carbon emissions very, very drastically and very um, conveniently. In game, it doesn't quite do that. In game, it slowly transfers growth from developing uh, from uh, some of the larger countries to some of the smaller countries. So that I think will be a good card. The important thing about this card in this game is that you really have to introduce it globally. Otherwise, it will just cause leakage. And there's not much that that helps. So other than that, though, I think with China here, we should be pretty happy. We can see that China does indeed is we're tackling all of the issues, basically water, coal free industry, coal power and nuclear. So these are very nice together and that should help us out a little bit as well. We could think about welfare. We could think about eco awareness. I don't really have that much cards and if we do look at the global stage uh, we can see that we are already focusing a lot of agents on China so five agents over here while we only have two in some of the other regions so they should also get some love right let's switch over to North America so people don't particularly like us because in particular we are uh, investing in the Tobin tax on the other hand tech is booming and people are getting more energy efficient over here so that's brilliant because that means uh, that actually our energy consumption should be going down and down yes yeah, specifically for the residential items we are seeing a lot of decrease in the commercial sector so uh, that is very very good for us and I very much appreciate that that's a, an effect of this card we could also think about whether we still need the transport efficiency investments because let's see how much we are still uh, how much we are still dealing from transport that's, that's still a lot so it's coming down very very dramatically we are nearly at half of what we used to be well either way I think we have to skip the turbine tax for now because uh, people are starting to like us way too little over here and I don't want to risk any uh, any other effect so let's go ahead with the cap, cap tra trade uh, and carbon emissions this is going to cost us money because we don't have this basically Ideally, I would also like to enact something popular, so maybe we have to switch out from the trade transport efficiency investments for a second here. So we could build up more drought and wildfire defenses, North America is very prone to that. We could build up some flood and coastal defenses, which might not be too bad. We haven't any indication that something like that is going to happen. It might be good. On the other hand, we could also think about gas production. So I know this is not popular, but let's look at the gas reserves that we do have here. Gas is... Well, here it's not actually that much, I think. If you look at conventional gas and compare that, so that's about one point... One point... About a million that we could have in total. How much does Russia have? Well, basically this similar amount. Middle East. Much more. Yeah, so it might actually make more sense to look at that in uh, the Middle East. So you know what, let's for now over here do build some uh, storm and flood defenses, so basically seawalls. Uh, and I think that's going to be okay. We are doing some research in energy and infotech, so that also should be very nice. How, much, how far are we actually away from researching something? Quantum computing in about 8 turns. Carbon capture and storage in well, basically next turn, so that's very nice. Also fourth generation nuclear will be extremely important, specifically for China, uh, because that will help us on uh, some of the uh, uranium usage there, so that is very important. And ultimately, uh, photovoltaic sense, and maybe fusion. Fusion would be excellent uh, for us. Right, in North America, let's look at the news first. So yes, we are seeing some more efficiency in both the private and the industrial sector, so that's nice. Turbine tax, they dislike that, and we should 
think about whether we can continue doing this. So I think we will actually have to drop that and instead of course we do oh sorry not the popular actions just any actions and we will have to where is it cap and trade there we go and I cap and trade over here and I think we can likewise drop the energy efficiency here for now and what we could do is build for the GEO headquarters that will that will basically set Europe to be one of our headquarter regions and the reason why I think Europe might be suited a little bit better for that than the United States is that we want to turn, basically, we want to turn the outlook of the region to, to more of a green outlook. Uh, right now it's very consumerist, so people like to spend, uh, people like the economy, and everything we do against the economy uh, is considered pretty bad. So that is not actually something that we should be doing uh, too much. So what we really should be trying to do is uh, make some eco-awareness campaigns. And specifically in our headquarter region, that would be great. Now North America is also consumerist, but I don't want to take turn them over because they do have a lot of oil reserves and we will need them to fuel our economy to get through this problem. So for now, I think Europe might be the better choice for this. And now might be a good time to play this because that will give our popularity um, a massive immediate boost. So. We might not be too bad doing uh, off to doing that right now. So let's try that, but keep that in mind because it's an extremely expensive uh, measure. We should also have a look at, I think we're not doing any materials research. And you are not the tech lead and North America is. But, and actually by far, so that in, in Europe this would take 210 years. Over here just 165. And there's no other region. But well, that's even comparable, yeah, except for maybe Oceania. Oceania. Do we have enough money to buy another, another cart here, though? Well, the next thing would be super tensile materials. That's important because that does give you access to advanced turbines and such. So, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and let's uh, make North America in our into our. Uh, Research powerhouse, so three research programs over here. So that's pretty good. And yeah, that does mean that we'll have to buy the technology from, from all of these other regions. But you know what? I think that's going to be fine. Right, so we have enacted cap and trade carbon emissions over here. So that's good. Um, let's jump over for, to Japan for a second over here. See what's going on. anti drought effects calm people. Yeah, so they do like us a little bit more. They do like all of these things. Specifically that we have been combating the, uh, the wildfires, the region is stable, pretty much everything is good for is good over here, so very happy about that. Uh, so firstly, let's go ahead and use the cap and trade scheme over here, and I think what we also want to do is do some robotic research over here, because of course we are in Japan and just robotic research is pretty cool, so aerosols, that will allow us to do some um, engineering uh, sorry some some global engineering some climate engineering so um, yeah that's that's going to be extremely useful but there are de definitive very negative uh, things associated with that as well uh, other than that though I think Japan is actually fine just one percent of the world population just two percent of global emissions so all in all happy with things as they are over here let's jump to Latin America and the news over here cropland is Fine. No, that's actually pretty good. So less emissions, more GDP. Deforestation slowing down. That's very good. Ooh, gas drilling. So that's fracking, basically. Uh, extensive horizontal tracking and hydraulic fracking give us access to more gas. And we are low on gas, so we'll have to think about that. Uh, we are fighting droughts, so that's nice to see. Peace reigns. So everything is pretty good over here. Things are very stable. Very, very good outlook over here. So. Uh, all in all, I'm very happy about things as they are. Should, of course, do the cap and trade thing. Could look at the business and household carbon regulations. Emissions over here are very significant by now. So let's have a look at where they're coming from. Forestry, still to a large extent. So I still do want to play, keep on playing this card. Other than that, resource production is pretty high. Agriculture is pretty high as well, I have to say. Why is that, actually? Where do these emissions come from? Gas use? Transport use? 
Oh, that's an interesting, interesting factor. Agriculture is pretty high over here, I have to say, yeah. Energy, though, very high renewable mix, gas mix, so they're not really using coal, so that's nice to see. Are they using, how is it, the industry looking then? Very little coal usage, actually. Still transport use. Transport does seem to be a major impact over here. Fuel oil, okay, so that's just growing, but where's the transport coming from? Local freight. Yeah, so we might have to build up some things over here. So let's do buy a car because Latin America is getting larger. And let's think about doing some transport efficiency. Just for a short while. And then I think we can switch to some of these other things, specifically the household and industrial carbon racks, and that should be okay. Right, let's go to our eternal struggling thing. So India, dry year. So that does mean water extraction is down, which is massively bad. And there are wildfire and erosion chances. They are going up, so that's not good. Also, they are striking. Everything is unstable. They are turning a little bit more vegetarian, which is nice because that means they are using less water. One child policy enforced overcrowding, actually. So that is something that we do have to look at. Overcrowding and a lot of toxicity. So let's deal with the overcrowding first and do some emergency housing relief. Of course, we also do want to sign up in this region, as in other regions, to the cap and trade scheme. Can we get out of the one-child policy then? So, overall population is somewhat stable, with working age adults increasing. So, yeah, I think we should continue to do that. And water stress, how, do, how does water stress look like? We should also think about the draws, right? So, yeah, let's... The yeah. so water stress. How is water usage looking? dramatic fall here so we enacted uh, organic farming and vegetarian revolution so that is a very very good development um, so yeah though we do have to think about drought and wildfire defenses so let's relax the one child policy for one turn simply because people don't like us that much and we will build up some wildfire defenses and some drought defenses because we are we have been warned about the dry year and I think that's a good idea. Okay, very good. So, what else do we have? Oceania, very small country, but stable. Tech is booming, that's nice to see. Geo measures, objections to turbine tax here. So we'll have to drop that, and that doesn't mean we're out of money. Oh dear, that's no good. Can we actually play turbine tax in China? I doubt it, we cannot. Ooh, that's a problem. We have way too little money. So yeah, okay, so let's go back to Europe. We're gonna not bid for uh, the headquarter for now because we just don't have the money. People in Japan hate us. Oceania, they barely like us. And Europe kind of hates us too. We should play maybe the Tobin tax for one more turn. And then down here, we are of course going to sign up to the cap and trades scheme and what else can we do we have built up some defenses over here we could improve them simply so that people do like us a little bit more subsidized biochar that would put water usage down less gas usage biofuel eh. so yeah things over here aren't too great in Oceania I have to say so it's actually Try to try to get Oceania to a little bit more of a green outlook. That's a fairly cheap card, so I think that's that's appropriate to play. Um, and we do still have a lot of cards to to play. So a lot of these regions are still not served. So let's have a look at Southern Africa. Stable, materialist, content, uh, and bad news. So monsoon, so more draw chance and more draw severity. Healthcare crisis, but it is peaceful over here. How do you look in terms of emissions? How are your emissions going? They are growing up immensely, and that's mainly due to the energy usage. How do you generate your energy then? I, I would expect coal. Yeah, 60% coal. Yeah, coal is really the big issue over here. Right, but things are not, not great. So firstly, let's think about the drought. Let's build improved defenses. Uh, let's sign people up to the cap and trade scheme. I would like to buy another card, but I don't think we have the money, so... 
This really should be one of our focus areas, but right now I, I just can't afford it. So, yeah, let's do that. In Northern Africa, things are not great in terms of militants. It's volatile. See, that's, that's very bad. Very low stability. And they are angry. So that's really not that great. But they are recovering st from Storm. Wildfire chance, though, increasing. Okay, so what can we do about the wildfires? Can do something. We can also, of course, sign up to the cap and trade scheme. And that doesn't leave us with anything else to deal with the volatile situation. I think this is very, very bad. These guys might just drop out of out of everything. So let's actually not go for the wrought defenses, even though we really, really should. And instead, we should go for the job sharing initiative because that will reduce unemployment and unemployment is one of the big issues over here. Can we actually see that workforce unemployment 16% so yeah. Hopefully that will deal with some of the root causes. The volatile situation I would really really love to play the provide security assistance but I don't think we can afford it. It's it's just way too too expensive. So let's switch over to southern uh, Southeast Asia. Things are seemingly somewhat okay. Deforestation slowing down, that I very much like to see. You're getting to in unstable, that of course I do not like to see. But all in all, we are doing fine over here. There's not that much that we do need to do, I think. We could do the higher education, of course. And maybe it's time to drop out of the protect the soil for a second over here. How is the deforestation looking? That's still pretty bad. But we are making very good changes over here. So, you know what? This is a very expensive card. So, let's drop out of that for a second here. Not out of the carb uh, carbon emissions, of course. And do some higher education development. So, that might then allow us to buy that one more card over there. Middle East, how are things? Austerity process, water stress, that's no good. Because that will cause refugees. Firstly... We are of course going to go for the cap and trade thing. Educational room, I think is still very relevant. Other than that though, do we see something about draughts? Sorry. No. No draughts. Things are un... No water stress. Water stress we do need to deal with. So water management program or vegetarian revolution. Where is it? Oh, it would be here. And we could just discourage meat production. Hmm. Subsidized biochar would also work. Or switch to organic farming. Farming. People wouldn't like that, but I think it's going to be okay. So let's do this. And that does leave Russia, where of course we do want to commit to the cap and trade scheme. Let's look at the news as well. So people are very sick. And we do have the protect the land scheme over here. So that's pretty expensive. And we look in terms of emissions. Mostly from energy. Where's that coming from? A little bit from coal. And we are using that in the industry and in the other sectors as well. So I think these would be a good... This would be a good car to play. People will like us a, a little bit more. Well, it's very unstable too, so it's probably... Okay, so let's do some medical welfare, so I think that is a nice combo over here. So that did free up some money that we could use in, in Northern Africa to buy things. So maybe we can get the security assistance instead. That does leave us with 15 bugs. How is the situation in Latin America in terms of deforestation? Is it is it still so drastic that we do have to deal with that? It's it's significant. Way better than it used to be. So again, let's try to be cost savvy here for a second. And I think what we could do, since they are consumerists, they will like the higher HDI via education so 
Let's go for that over here for a second. It does give us some more money. Not enough to buy another slot though. Any Anywhere else where we could do something similar, where we could play maybe a cheaper card? We're not playing that many, that expensive cards though, so... Yeah, that's really a limit to what we can do. Could think about not using... Committing to nuclear for a turn over here in China, but I'm very worried what would happen then. Could go for the in transport and efficiency improvement instead. That would free up a card. Okay, yeah, let's do that for, for one turn. And that means in North Africa we can buy one more turn, uh, one more thing, and we can go for the job sharing initiative. And that's very, very good, I think. So, you know what? We do have enough time to take the turn over here and see, or hit the end turn button and see how the world is going to look in 2040. Let's see. World headlines. The emissions are falling a little bit, but we have reached 1.5 degrees of warming. So that is, is very bad because that means we are going to see an increase in disasters and permanent changes. And of course emissions are still increasing, so global population, impact death toll by now only 2 million, but 1 million refugees, that's not good to see. Carbon capture and sequestration technology breakthrough in Japan. Unfortunately this is just simply not a very good technology because it drives down energy efficiency so much that it just doesn't, doesn't feel worthwhile. Indian emissions are growing by 26%. India is starting to look like a real problem. As we expected, of course, but it's still, still very, very bad. Do people hate us? Yes, they do in Japan. They do in Europe. Things are looking up a little bit in, in North America. This is pretty much irrelevant, but yeah, we are losing support quickly in Japan, Europe. And we have burnt all of our goodwill in the developed world, which does mean we are losing... Ooh, sorry, uh, that we are losing a lot of money, so that is a big, big problem. And you can see the world is maybe maybe not a very good place over here. So, yeah, we'll have to see about that next time, though. But as you can see, there are a lot of problems um, going on over here, specifically in North America. People do really just... Oh, we have played Turban Tags over here still in Europe. Yeah, that explains why why they really dislike us. But yeah, we'll have to see how that looks uh, next time. So I do look forward to seeing you guys Friday. Do subscribe if you want to uh, get the updates and such. Do leave a like um, if you enjoyed. But otherwise, I see, uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye-bye.